In the race to free the world from its addiction to oil, no breakthrough has proven more difficult to achieve than the invention of an affordable and practical electric car. It's a global contest, a kind of engineering Olympics. China's entry, the BYD, short for build your dream. Germany's got the BMW Mini E. Nissan in Japan is sprouting the leaf. And big auto Detroit is muscling in with the Chevy Volt and the Ford Focus, all within months of each other. The big corporations are getting a run for their money from smaller, more flexible innovators determined to put their products on the road. This car will meet... Kevin Zinger is an entrepreneur who's teaming up with China to produce his own American electric car. It charges with a simple 220 household plug. Zinger's got one parked in his Los Angeles driveway. This is it, huh? This is the Coda sedan that's going to be coming out in California uh, at the end of this year. Wow, it even has a new car smell, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> it just doesn't have the gasoline bill. Okay. Here we go. Zinger believes past electric cars have been too exotic. Playthings for the rich and famous. His dream is to make Coda the first perfectly ordinary electric car, saving his customers greenback dollars as they're reducing greenhouse gases. No look at me features here. He has designed the Coda to look like a run-of-the-mill sedan, capable of merging quietly onto the American roadways. You know, we're here on a freeway and no one's looking at us. People are passing us, people are behind us. That's kind of, you really forget that you're an electric car. For this car, there's really no noticeable difference at all with a, a comparable internal combustion engine car, except right. for the fact that it's quieter and quicker. No matter what the style, an electric car must answer one immediate question. How far will it go on a single charge? American drivers average 33 miles a day, but the Coda promises to deliver 100 miles worry-free. That makes one component key to success. So what's the secret to an electric car? It's all about the battery. The battery is the key enabling technology. The, mad, the battery, safe, reliable, affordable battery system equals safe, reliable, affordable, all-electric car. That's the fundamental equation. This is where all the... For his exclusive battery design, Zinga signed up a team of engineers based in a California lab. They came up with a 900-pound battery pack bolted beneath the floor of the car. I'm really proud of what we've Phil Gao is the chief engineer on the project. The kind of so how many batteries are on this thing? It's one battery made up of 728 cells. It looks nothing like a car battery. It, it is nothing like a car battery. It's its own unique thing. In common English, it's enough to push a car the size of a Coda for 100 miles, and it's got uh, more than enough power to handle all 133 horsepower. Where are these batteries made? Right now, they're made in China. Battery manufacturing is another growing energy business where the Chinese are jumping out in front of the rest of the world. This is the Lishan Battery Factory in northern China, where they're making batteries in a joint venture for the Coda car. Lishan is the leading maker of small lithium batteries for American companies like Apple, Samsung, and Motorola. You may already have one of their batteries in your cell phone. So why China? China's invested a huge amount in uh, building batteries and building plants to build batteries. And when we said we needed to build this battery for this car, they put up a 500,000 square foot plant, custom set up, state of the art, to build these batteries for us. Because of jobs? Because of jobs and because they see that that's the future. 
So why can't we do it here? I mean, this doesn't seem like a that difficult thing to do. We're working on doing it here. We're, we're, uh, we're looking into doing that at the same time. But to begin with, we have to start in China because all, they've already made that commitment and already uh, built the plant to be able to build these batteries. China's eagerness to encourage new technology makes this American car possible. For an American entrepreneur, yeah. teaming up with China and other international partners is really the only way to create a competitive car without spending hundreds of millions, if not a billion dollars or more, of capital. And that's a revolution. It's too early to tell if Zinger's electric sedan will catch on. But by plugging into China's energy revolution, he's giving himself a fighting chance and showing how many roads to the future run through China. Still, other alternatives to oil are being cooked up much closer to home. Jimmy Martin is a man in the middle of his own personal energy crisis. His fleet of 18-wheelers runs up the East Coast from Florida to Maine. And every six miles, his trucks burn a gallon of diesel fuel. When my daddy started in the trucking business in 1972, we were paying on 25 cents a gallon for fuel. So fuel was not a big issue. Now when we're almost at $3 a gallon, in some places you are over $3 a gallon, fuel is your most expense. Despite the rising price of oil, trucks continue to dominate the freight industry. In the U.S., 80% of all the energy spent on moving goods is burned by trucks. Lately, Jimmy has made a point of filling his tanks at a small truck stop in Martinsville, Virginia. He likes the fact that their diesel fuel is part vegetable oil. I started using it before I even knew I was using it, to be honest. Uh, I never paid no attention to the sign at the bottom of the tank. But then I got to noticing my trucks were running smoother. I was getting better fuel mileage. It seemed to be running a little cleaner. I'm really amazed with the you, truth. How about your engine? Have you seen any difference in the... Dean Price, the owner of the Red Birch Truck Stop, believes that biofuels hold the key to the future. I really... My trucks don't really use any oil. He was first inspired by an energy blast of a different kind. Hurricane Katrina. Katrina swept through the Gulf in the summer of 2005 with the force of an atomic bomb, ripping right through the heart of U.S. oil fields in the Gulf of Mexico. The storm damaged or destroyed 30 oil platforms, disrupting a quarter of all U.S. oil production and sent an economic shockwave across the entire nation. Dean Price remembers it well. It was August the 30th of 2005. It hit on a Monday. By Friday, this truck stop had run out of fuel. So it was sort of my come to Jesus moment when I sort of realized how dependent not only my business, but this country was on foreign oil. Katrina stopped the flow of much of our foreign oil too, blocked by the ravaged refineries and ports in the Gulf. And it, it, it scared me. But not only did it scare me, it, it angered me. And I started thinking, what could I do as a, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, um, as an American, what could I do to make this truck stop energy independent? So what we set out to do is we built a biodiesel plant here next to the truck stop. The Red Birch refinery produces about 2,000 gallons of biofuel a day. Dean and his partners are staking their careers and their financial futures on the energy contained inside millions of tiny canola seeds. The biofuel process is pretty low tech. Squeeze out the oil, save the high protein husks to sell as animal feed, filter out the impurities, mix with the same chemicals found in some antifreeze and drain cleaners, and serve, either straight or combined with diesel. For Dean Price, the benefits go far beyond the fuel. If you think about big oil, they're not really in the oil business per se. They're in the infrastructure business. They get it from A to B through pipelines, 
through barges, through tankers. And what they do is they bring it to a central point and then through the pipelines, they distribute it out to the retailers into your vehicle. Biofuels works the very opposite. The crops are already decentralized. The majority of the diesel in this country is consumed on the interstates. Just so happens that our interstates run through the heartland of America, farms. We contracted with area farmers to grow a crop called canola. Glen Rhodes is one of 50 local farmers benefiting from Dean Price's biofuel business. It's a canola flower. The flowers bloom on these little stems and then a seed pod forms. That's, that's what we're after is the seed in the, in the plant. Burning fuel from living plants nets no carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. The amount of CO2 released using biofuels is just the same amount the plants absorbed while growing. Some worry that setting aside farmland to grow the fuel for our cars and trucks will make our food more scarce and expensive. But canola biofuels compete less with food crops than corn-based products like ethanol. Glenn plants his canola in the winter and rotates it with wheat. He runs his own equipment on biodiesel. And he's grateful for the extra income provided by the energy crop. I don't think that, that biofuels will necessarily save every farm, but it's a tool that will help those who want to do it reduce their cost. It'll make farming more viable for more people that want to do it. If the drip drip of oil in Dean Price's shed represents the future, it seems like it has a long way to go. Biofuels make up barely 5% of our energy needs, even when you count corn ethanol. And there's some powerful companies protecting their turf. We're competing against Exxon. We're competing against Shell, ADM, and Cargill. These are some of the biggest names in the world as far as business goes. And here's Red Birch Energy a little podunk biodiesel manufacturing outfit that can compete with them. I hope he does real good at it because if he can go at it, maybe some of these other truck stops will get the hint and they'll start doing it because it, biodiesel's kind of a hard thing to find. But Dean feels if he can hang on, the rest of the world will eventually come around. Earth Day 2010. The Secretary of the Navy, Ray Mabus, introduces the world to a pet project. A battle-ready FA-18 Super Hornet, flying on a 50-50 mix of petroleum and bio-jet fuel. They call the plane the Green Hornet. It went at Mach 1.2 over the speed of sound. It performed very well. The plane didn't notice the difference. Mabus is putting together an entire carrier strike group. The aircraft carrier, submarine, supporting ships, helicopters, and FA-18 jet fighters, capable of running on alternative energy by 2016. By 2020, Mabus wants half the Navy's energy to come from alternative and renewable sources. But meeting his goal of 16 million barrels of biofuel would mean a 400,000% increase in its current consumption. Mabus is confident that the Navy will make the switch, cultivating everything from oilseed crops to algae, developing homegrown fuels the whole country can one day use. What we bring to the table is the demand. We use a lot of fuel. We can help small business, we can help agriculture, we can help in terms of energy independence for this entire country and not just for our military. Dean Price is certainly hoping Mabus's prediction comes true and biofuels finally enter the energy mainstream. A hundred years from now, when those fellows over there in the desert are out of oil, our children and our grandchildren will still 
have oil and will be it is renewable it will come back year after year after year